finally here. So I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful sill panel with a lovely curve all the way down, right angle lip underneath, and he's even put the lip underneath for the wheel arch. Now, you would be forgiven for thinking that you would need some extremely specialised kit and equipment to make that panel. Well, I gotta tell you, Doc, you don't. I use my own hands to make some homemade tools to make that sill and I'm going to show you guys blow by blow, step by step, how to make the equipment to make the sill. I better show you how to make the sill as well, hadn't I? Well, I'd be a bit useless without that. Um, I've had to do this because I've had to make my own kit because I haven't got the equipment to make stuff. Oh, woe is me. So, mothers, go and tell your children not to do what I have done. What was that off? House of the Rising Sun. My mother was a tailor. She sewed my new blue jeans. To start with, you're going to need some tube. So this tube is available from any steel stockholder in varying diameters. So pick the diameter that meets the requirements of the radius that you wish to replicate on your panel. So that's the first thing you're going to need. The next thing you're going to need is some square bar. And I would personally aim for around 12 mil or half inch. And the first job is cut the tube you need for the length of the sill repair that you want to make. And then take the square bar and grind off two of the corners just take them off so you bevel the corners off and then the corners that are beveled off aim that onto your tube like that so lay that on the tube and this is the most frustrating part of the job what you need to do then is weld this to the tube and if you weld it along where you've created your beveled gap uh, the weld will penetrate through into the gap because the next thing you need to do after that is then grind it off so it's completely flush. This is why this is quite difficult. Um, I mean the main reason it is difficult is because as soon as you weld it, wherever you've welded it first it tends to pull over in that direction and it ends, not, ends up not being very flush and that's the problem I've got on the one I already made. I made it a long time ago I'll show you what it looks like. So this is the one I made a long time ago, a few years ago, and here it is. And what I've decided to do is cut the square bar off the top and re-weld it on. So that's what I've been doing. Um, and it's nice and square now. And to be honest with you, I made loads of sill sections up. It was slightly out. You couldn't tell. It really didn't make that much difference. And I just knocked this up ever so quickly. This was an old, this was an old bull bar uh, that I took off a vehicle. I was working in an accident repair place. I took it off, and I thought that's a nice bit of metal. I'll keep that. It's actually in two halves, so I welded the two halves together just to add to complications. And um, yeah, that's it. I blanked the ends off with some uh, two mil thick steel, two or three mil thick steel. This tube's around about three mil which seems plenty adequate for the job. I go for around three mil when you're ordering your tube up uh, or use tube that's around about three mil. I wouldn't go any really less and I certainly wouldn't go any more. So that seems to work quite nicely. And once you've done that, like I say, blank your ends off with the same kind of thickness material. If you can find a bit of scrap lead around or something and that makes up the basic tool that is it in essence that is it uh, but what i'm going to show you guys i'm going to help you out a little bit because when you form the lip that goes on the end of your panel so you'll have the panel uh, where it lips round, say where it would go under a wheel arch or something that that lips probably going to cause you the most amount of um grief really it's gonna it's going to uh, take a lot to do that if you're not used to shrinking metal and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to modify this tool 
uh, on the end I'm going to make a nice modification to help you out with shrinking the lip down so what I intend to do is use this piece of angle iron so you're going to need some angle iron and you're also going to need some flat bar to make a bracelet with and uh, I'll make this up I'll get it all ground off I'll make it I'll make the end up and then uh, I'll show you where okay guys now this isn't going to make any sense to you at the moment but please stick with it halfway through the video the penny will drop I promise you so we've got a piece of angle iron we've got a piece of flat bar and these are running parallel to each other around the other side I've got this lined up with a square bar that's welded to the tube so this is running parallel with the square bar that's welded to the tube the angle iron is parallel to the flat bar and the tube is resting on the top of the very edge of it now this is our takeoff point for the sill so the sill the lip the one lip will attach to here it will be formed around the tube and then it will come to this takeoff point because normally a panel or a sill will curve round and then it will go off in a different direction so I'm going to take this off in a straight direction because this is I'm just going to basically replicate what I've already made in the past so what you need to do is get your sharpie and draw off on your angle iron in, into there and we're going to cut that in there and then weld the angle iron to the tube where the cutout is. It'll all make sense guys, don't worry. All finished off. I've done one both sides so I can put one on the left or the right hand side of the panel to create the wheel arch lip or just a closing lip to butt up against another panel. This is exactly the same piece of steel that you saw the sill made out of in the intro so you've seen something I haven't which is quite bizarre so this is our sheet of steel this is uh, 400 by about I think it's about 620 two foot uh, I've cut it oversize the reason I cut it oversize is because we need to use this as a lever so say our sill is only going to be this high you need this extra because we're going to bend it around something and you won't have enough leverage if you keep it to the size that you need to keep it to. So this is why I say always make things larger than you need to. There are a variety of reasons for this. I'm not going to go into all of them because it will use up another half an hour's worth of time. So for this video, our purposes are for leverage. So uh, first things first, I've deburred the edges with a piece of emery cloth. Most important, save your cut in your hand because raise the sharp edges particularly if you cut it yourself because uh, if you cut it with tin snips or something it could be a jag jagged edge so always take off the burr with a bit of emery cloth so next tip uh, digital vernier caliper I want to measure off a lip on the bottom so the lower lip which is going to be bent straight so it's going to be dead straight lip uh, lips are typically around 12 mil to about 18 depending on the make and the model of the vehicle i'm going to go for a 15 on this it looked quite nice and it looked quite balanced and it's quite an average size so like i say digital vernier caliper uh turn it on and wheel out 15 millimeters Okay, we've got 15 millimetres or thereabouts. Put your jaws up against the steel and mark off each side. Now we've got a little scratch. Each side in exactly the same place. Or we can just run it along as well if you wanted to mark a line out all the way along. Not absolutely imperative this. And I'll explain why in a second. So now we have our first lip line in place. And I can just highlight this with a sharpie. So I'll just highlight where we are. That side and that side. It can be quite hard to see, just a scratch. So we've got our first we've got our first piece 
drawn out, uh, we'll go on to the next stage. Next stage, forming the lower lip. Big piece of angle iron needed. Well, probably not as big as this. This is a big old piece of angle iron. You won't need anything this big, but I picked this up. My dad gave me this, so thanks, Dad. So I've got this big piece of angle iron we're going to use to form it over. And I've got a smaller piece, because you need two pieces. So there are our main forming tools. We need something to tap the lip over with. So we could use a large tin man's mallet, something like this. There's loads of stuff you could use. Uh, please guys, don't get tied down to somebody telling you there's only one way to do things. Bit of a pet hate of mine, people endlessly saying, you know, why didn't you do it this way or that way? Well, there isn't really any one way of doing anything and I don't ever believe there's a best way of doing anything because it's always the best way for the person that's doing it. So. Tim Mann's mallet. Uh, what I'm going to be using mostly is a curved pane and pick hammer, uh, my favourite bit of kit. Uh, we'll talk more about that in a second. A uh, big beach block, really handy. Uh, use a hammer to bash this in to help form the lip. Or we could use a nice forming bat, something like that, a nice hardwood forming bat, nice flat faced one. Um, we've also got two sets of C grips. Again, like I said in one of my other videos, these are vice grips. As far as I'm concerned, these are the best grips in the world. So what we need to do then is we need to form our first lip. So where we had our where we had our lines each side. We line this up with the edge of the angle iron. This is, this is the part you want to take a bit of care over because it's very easy for it to slip in and out. And then you'll put your other piece over the top like so, and then that'll trap it and stop it from moving. Uh, C grips. Basically place the C grips over like that and then grip them up. Really is as straightforward as that. Set each side and get it bang on the line. Do these up quite tight because you don't want things to slip. So get it done really tight. Like Jade Muckley said, when I say tight, I mean tight. So. This one just needs a bit of a tap back. And there we have it. Bang on both sides. Now I was saying that it isn't imperative to have a line scribed all the way along. The reason being, as long as you've got it accurate at both ends, and your angle iron is straight, you don't really need to mark it off all the way along, do you? So. Um, as long as your sharpie lines line up on the edge. I'll zoom in and I'll just show you exactly what I mean. So there's our sharpie line. Couple of points about me planishing hammer. Now what I've done is I've actually polished up a new face on this hammer, which probably isn't that obvious from this video. But what I've done is I've worked really hard at taking the very edge off. So this very edge, I've rounded it off and tried to keep it fairly flat in the center. Although you can see it's got a curve on it. Hopefully you can see it's got a curve ah, that's better. You can see that it's got a curve on it now. What I've done is I've tapered the edge off because what happens is when you use these hammers for planishing things flat, if you haven't got the hammer exactly true to the panel, which is very hard to do, then you're going to end up driving the sharp edge of the hammer into the panel. And this is when you end up getting a lot of marks on the surface of your metal, which just doesn't look nice. So if I can, if we compare this to one that I haven't done anything to. 
and we can see that that's a lot flatter I hope I just show the you the uh, the one that I've done and the one that I haven't done so interesting little story I'll tell you very quickly some of you are going to find this quite interesting I would have thought um, here's my here's my hammer that I've owned for 30 years 30 years man and boy yeah so I've owned this old Sykes hammer for 30 years and I must have fitted I don't know thousands of door skins with this hammer so much so that I've actually wore the hammer out um, I'll show you the difference on the other one now you can't buy this hammer anymore stop making it and um, I tried to get a new one because I was working with a guy who had one of these hammers and it had seen very very little use and uh, I offered the hammer up to his and we could see how much difference there was if I zoom the if I can get this camera zoomed in you can see that I've actually flattened this corner off where it's just clipped things over and over again because I'm right handed and and it's bent it's bent the hammer at an angle so it's completely bent over on the corner as well I appreciate it's probably quite hard to see that and uh, these hammers came up uh, they got they're, they're like a very very accurate copy because when I held this hammer up against my work colleagues it's exactly the same the head and uh, we can see the difference if I can offer the two up side by side there we go so we can see the height difference the amount that I've literally just worn away off the head of that hammer and then I mean look at the height difference in the centre, completely different and the pick end's just been worn away to nothing. I was actually noticing that the hammer had lost quite a lot of its uh, momentum when I was hitting things with it. Of course you know using it every day or nearly every day for 30 years you just get used to it you don't notice the differences until you pick something else up and start using it so this is why I decided to uh, get on and replace it then couldn't replace it of course with an original hammer I managed to find this one which is a knockoff I would have said um, but yeah very happy with it so I'll use this in the demonstration okay so using our planishing panel hammer my favorite bit of kit um, you want to start with downward blows so start with downward blows having to do this left-handed unfortunately would I get the camera the other side? I don't think I will. So this is going to be interesting. I'll do everything the wrong way around. I'm going to try my right hand as well. So what you want to do is you want to keep traveling up and down, um, tapping, tapping this lip over as you go. Um, rather obviously to most people, I would assume. If you just go for it in one spot, you're going to bend it over and then you're going to have a, a stretched piece each side. So what you need to do is just go along gently. hear that harsh metallic sound picking up now that's because we're making contact with the angle line through the steel
So as I'm going, I started off hitting it directly down. So we're going downwards to start with. And then as the steel lip is bending round, I'm adjusting the angle of the hammer. So I'm hitting the steel more or less face on. Um, this does one of two things. It keeps the metal as flat as it possibly could do. And also, it stops the steel from slipping because it could slip between these two pieces of metal. If I hit it at too much of an angle to start with, it actually push the steel along. So that's another reason. So I'm just gently going along. No rush, guys. You don't need to rush this at all. The more amount of time and the more gentle the blows, the better. You don't need any, as we were talk, taught at college, you don't need any arm action. You're not moving your whole arm. It's just all in the wrist, really. Do blonde tendres to follow, no doubt. So, okay. Another metallic -y sound taking over now is we're actually making contact with the back face of the angle iron. Um, now if you're not used to planishing steel, uh, this is where you could actually stop now and utilise other tools, as I said earlier. Um, you could even possibly use a hard rubber mallet, that's another good bit of kit. And you could finish it off uh, your final run. hard rubber mallet. Rubber mallets work really well actually, I think they're very underrated. Or we could use our uh, wooden bat, like I say it's got a nice flat front. So, another wonderful piece of kit. Nice flat long face as well, so spread that load. Look at, like I said, big wooden mallet. Again, I can't stress enough, no high impact, just very light bounce. Almost like you kind of, it's almost like you're kind of bouncing it off the, um, off the panel. So you get into this kind of, almost like a drumming kind of bounce. Another good bit of kit, nylon faced hammer. You see, this is going to uh, planish that out without there being much chance of ruining the face of the steel. Or just simply planish out with the panel hammer, but then you are going to run in to one of two things. The first one I've already talked about extensively, which is you're going to catch the hammer and you're going to end up uh, leaving hammer marks in the steel. Like I said, I've already polished this off to help stop that from happening. And the other reason, which I'll talk you through and give you a quick demonstration on, before we go any further. Rather than me just telling you guys what effect over planishing can have on steel, I thought I'd give you this quick demonstration. So I've got a 30 millimeter wide strip of steel and it's folded directly down the center at 90 degrees to give us two 15 millimeter wide lips. Exactly the same as our panel. 
And um, so what I'm going to do is give you a demonstration of over planishing one of the lips and we'll see the undesired results when I planish it metal to metal. What I mean by metal to metal, I mean, i.e. it's on a metal surface, planishing it using a metal planishing hammer. So uh, while I'm here, I thought I'd just quickly show you this. I've got a hardwood beach block, which I can use for forming things around. Uh, hardwood is fantastic for this kind of thing when you're using uh, metal planishing hammers because the wood allows you to planish it quite hard without creating the undesired stretch. Also here I've got a lovely cast iron block of uh, metal and um, if I form things over this and I really really need to hit it quite hard then I can use something like the wooden mallet. Uh, I've got a few other forming tools I use here, just old mechanics tools there. And um, yeah, let's get on with the demonstration. So I've over planished our lip and it's well and truly bowed now. As you can see when I hold a straight edge up against it. Something else that's uh, I really think worth mentioning is look at the finish that I've got on there. Yes, I can see that it's dimpled, but only lightly dimpled and we've got no harsh planishing marks because I went to the trouble of refacing the hammer before I used it by taking that harsh edge off the new hammer. What I'll do is I'll planish this again using an untuned hammer and we'll see the difference. So this is another hammer. This is brand new, straight from the manufacturers and I haven't reprofiled the face. This is as it's come straight from the factory. So. Let's planish this out and see what happens. So hopefully you can see the difference there. I've picked up a few marks off the edge of the hammer where I haven't been able to hold the hammer dead level and it's just picked up on the very edge. I know it's quite subtle and it's no huge deal, but it just makes a difference to the end result I could probably put a roll-up disc across there and lose those few small marks. Something else you guys I'd really like you to, to think about is a lot of these bodywork procedures that are giving us undesired results are also exactly the results you want when you're performing other operations like when you weld and you create a shrunk area then you can obviously use that heat to create a shrunk area where something's stretched. Also, you may need to put a gentle curve in something and you could use this over planishing method to put the curve in that you require for the job that you're working on. I actually use this method quite a lot when we buy new trims for cars to go around windscreens and they don't fit exactly right. And I've often used this over planishing method along the edge of the uh, windscreen lip to get it to fit perfectly. I've just hung the sheet over the edge of this angle and if I push it up against it I push that end, it's still flat against that end. If I push it in the middle, it's not flexing in any way, which means that this edge here hasn't stretched at all and it all remains beautifully true to this nice big flat piece of angle iron. The next stage is to roll the major curve into the panel um, what I need next is some more solid 12 millimeter bar and I'm going to use this bar to trap the right angle lip against the forming tool. Got the forming tool here, 
just flashed a coat of paint on it to stop it from going rusty and uh, I'm going to clamp the bottom of that panel underneath there so that's the next procedure so the panel secured to the forming tool why have I used this piece of metal this extra piece of metal I could have just simply gripped the panel to the tool the problem is when I go to form the shape of the sill the panel will probably take the path of least resistance and then buckle around the grips and this extra piece of metal ensures that this lip stays straight whilst performing the bending operation exactly the same principle applies to the other end of the panel this is the end that I'm going to hold and force around the tube to create the curve of the sill so what we need is something else we need a piece of angle iron or something similar to the flat bar underneath and I'm not going to attach this to the end of the panel on the top I'm going to attach it underneath very important this because if I was to attach it from the top then it could still pull around the grips we need it flat underneath on the pushing side So forming this panel around the former is a fairly straightforward procedure as you could probably imagine uh, but there are one or two considerations that you might want to think about while you're doing it. What I always do is I always try and pull the panel away from me to hold as much tension on the panel as possible so I'm going to be pulling it in this direction all the time keeping as much pressure as I can and I'm going to bend it around the tube and I'm going to take it slightly past this point, just slightly past. Um, this will allow for any spring back of the panel so uh, that when I form another lip, which I'm going to show you afterwards, uh, it holds it against that nice and flat. It's nice and tight and um, there's enough tension then in the curve to hold it where it needs to be. So that's what I'm going to do next is just basically form it around this tube so I've taken the panel past our second forming lip I've taken it past I've had a lot more spring back than I, I thought I would to be honest with you I've made this quite wide um, so the wider the panel you're going to make the harder it is going to be to form it over the tube so what I've done is I've moved our angle iron down to the uh, center of the tube and I've used a adjustable G clamp like a woodworking tool I'll zoom in on it in a minute so you can see what I've done. So I've used the angle iron to hold the metal tight against the tube and then I can simply with another with another flat piece of metal just try and keep this in mind all the time while you're doing this. Uh, take your time, don't rush it, don't panic because it's never going to go as easy as you think it is. We all know that so just bear in mind always try and bend things with a flat piece of tube to keep the panel as flat as possible because as soon as you start grabbing hold of it with one hand and pulling it then it's going to bend around your hand so just put the just put the tube the other side you can literally use the tube itself to bend the panel back so that it fits the second lip profile that we're going to put in. I'll just give that a little bit more. Okay, so that's more or less in line with that now. I'm quite happy with that. So there's my adjustable woodworking clamp 
holding the panel tight to the seal making tool. And as you can see we've got a lovely curve all the way along and you can see in the reflection that we've got no ripples or dents or anything going on. So this is the result I've ended up with. I'm reasonably happy with the results. I've got a tiny bit of deformation just along there where I bent it back over the angle iron but that's nothing that can't be removed with a tiny bit of planishing. I said right at the start that um, I only wanted the panel to be half as high as it is so I'm going to lose this top section now as we only needed the height for the leverage. So this can go now, make a nice job of cutting it off and that can be used for something else of course. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to form a lip along this edge which could be the lip under a wheel arch or it could be the lip that spot welds to another section like a court panel section on a Volkswagen camper say something like that same as my Bedford and I need to lose this corner so I'm going to form this lip over and this corner needs to go because we don't need that so I'm going to form a 12 mil lip along there that's what I've scribed off 12 millimeters that'll be a, a nice kind of width any more than 12 millimeters and it's going to be a struggle to shrink this around because we're going to shrink this using just the machine and a planishing hammer. Panel cut down, gripped back to the forming tool, all ready to form the second lip. So we call this the arch lip. So what I've made up is I've made up a brace which will fit over the top like so. And I can just grip this into place and then this saves me from doing it the normal way I do it because uh, if you're not used to this kind of thing then this brace will really help the situation. Also, I did it before without this angle welded to the tube. I literally just gripped loosely a piece of angle in the back and then hammered and dollared it round. It still worked absolutely fine, but this is gonna take a lot of the uh, aggravation out, I think. So I'll grip that up and then I'll show you the result. Okay, another chance for me to uh, try out my left-handed planishing technique. Didn't really think this one out, did I, when I designed this garage? Um, so, this is going to cause me the most amount of grief, shrinking this edge in around here. Uh, so, what I'll probably do is gradually planish it around there I mean, this is the trick to anything like this, do it in increments, don't just try and bash it straight over like I was explaining earlier. But this is this is where we could most run into trouble and this is going to take the most amount of skill. Probably won't do too much talking, I'll just get on with it and then you can see what I'm actually up to. So this is going to be the part that needs to be shrank down and then this is going to be the part that needs to be tapped over. I'm going to have to use a metal planishing hammer for all of this but because we've got a brace on there, it'll stop it from springing back the other side and deforming the lip. And what you'll see is we've got a series of what are called tucks forming. This is where the material's gathered up. Um, what you must be quite careful of is not to allow the tuck to completely uh, overlap itself. Because what we can do is as, as this starts to lay flat, the back of the tool will then act as a dolly and straighten it back out again. We can planish it out nice and flat.
Before I planish this round I drew some parallel lines all the way along the edge of the lip or where the lip was going to be formed um, and you can see where the most amount of shrinking has taken place is of course right on this bend where the lines become quite triangulated and then spread back out till they're parallel again around here. So the distance between there is a lot bigger than it is there and that's because I've shrank all this metal in. I've actually pushed the metal together. Something else that I've noticed as well is that when I mounted the panel back into the jig I must have allowed it to slip slightly um, so we've ended up with more of a 15 millimeter lip at the bottom and a 12 millimeter at the top. Um, no great deal of uh, issue with this really only the fact that if you offered it up to another panel then it may not be exactly square now uh, but for the purposes of this demonstration it's absolutely perfect um, when you're forming a lip over like this the best kind of size i would say would be about a 10 mil 10 millimeters i can very very easily shrink that down once you get over 12 it starts to become incredibly hard to shrink it down and i have really struggled to get this 15 millimeter lip down but I wanted it as wide as I could have it just to show you what is actually still possible and um, that still looks like a very good width for a manufacturer's sort of type lip and of course I can belt sand the inside of this to get this nice and square and then clean up the surface face as well which is what I intend to do just to make it look a bit nicer. I'm going to call this repair panel complete now. I've done what I wanted to do and that was to form a curved sill panel with a wheel arch return lip and also a right angle lip at the bottom so that it could be spot welded back to the vehicle. Okay, for those that are only interested in the information and the video's over guys, and for the rest of you that are actually interested in Trev's blog YouTube channel, I've got a few bits of info for you. I'd just like to say a quick thanks very much for all the comments and emails I've received since the last tips and tricks videos and I've been overwhelmed with the comments. Quite literally, overwhelmed with the comments. Um, I looked at the video the following day to see if I'd received any comments. I had a notification to say, Trev, you've got uh, nine comments. So I, I clicked on the video itself and I read 120 comments off you guys, which was really, really nice. All good stuff said, a couple of negatives. You're always going to get negatives, aren't you? Um, so thanks very much. Uh, a couple of things I will say, I have noticed now, it's come to my attention that every now and then I receive a notification to say that you've received a comment and I read it in the notification section so I'm reading a comment oh that looks interesting I'll click on it and answer that so I click on it it takes me to the video the comment has disappeared into the ether so if you've left me one of those comments and I can't read it I can't reply to you uh, the other thing as well is if you comment on somebody else's comments so if you're reading through the comment section and then you add something to that I don't actually know you've left that. I don't know unless I trawl through the hundreds and hundreds of comments because I don't get a notification for that and I don't know why because I'm 50, not 15. So I'm not very tech savvy. So that's that. So apologies if I've missed you out. If I have missed you out, it's not been intentional. Um, you know, I like to give everybody a bit of love. Hey, you look like you could use a foot massage. Um, yeah, so just before I go, um, oh, something else, yeah. Thanks very much for all the people that have um, asked if they could help support the channel by means of a donation. What? Unbelievable. A few people have actually asked me that, and I'm blown away by that, guys. Thank you very much. I've put a PayPal link in the video description if you would like to leave a donation. Um, and what this 
will do is this will really help me because I can put this money towards tools and equipment I need to make new videos. So there's going to be, you know, new content. Um, if you'd like to help me in another way, another than giving me a donation, then what you could do is just watch the adverts that are attached to the video because all those pennies will all add up and then I can roll it all together and I can go off and buy a piece of equipment and then make another five videos, make some real good cracking content. And one last thing as well, the hammer you saw used in the video. Who'd like this hammer? A beautiful planishing hammer. It could be yours. All you've got to do is answer the question in the comment section. Let's hope I manage to actually read it. So leave a comment section in the video, one simple question, what was the year of uh, registration? So the first year my Bedford van was on the road. The answer's in part one, guys. Part one of the Bedford CA van restoration. So just simply leave the date in there. And then on the next video, what I'll do is I'll put all the names in a hat. I haven't got a hat. I have to get a hat, won't I? I'll get all the names in a hat and we'll draw it out. And the first person that draws the name out, then they're going to win this beautiful planishing hammer and I'll post it to you at my own expense. Thanks very much for watching guys. Bye for now. Next two videos will be more metal shaping. So plenty of good things to come if you like that kind of thing. If you don't then obviously the reverse would apply. It's going to be a very bad thing and things are only going to get worse. Anyway, bye for now.